Hello, my dear guest, and welcome aboard. Today, we're going to talk about ship modeling, but in a slightly different way. I invite you to visit a real sailing ship, but to view her through the eyes of a ship modeler. We will explore essential ship details to better understand how they might be recreated in model form. We are now in Barcelona, Spain, and the ship we're about to visit is called Santa Eulalia. I would say she is the crown jewel of the Maritime Museum of Barcelona's collection. Originally built in 1919 under the name Carmen Flores, she underwent a complete transformation from a pure sailing paleboat or schooner to a contemporary motor vessel, stripped of sails and equipped with all the modern equipment like radio and radar. Then, in 1997, the ship was purchased by the museum and restored to her original shape. She received a new name, Santa Eulalia, and once again became a pure sailing schooner, undertaking a number of sailing voyages. If you want to know about Santa Eulalia in greater detail, please check links in description to this video. And of course, there is a book by the Maritime Museum of Barcelona. This book elaborates on the ship's history. However, what's particularly fascinating is the section that describes the renovation process. That section details the intriguing research undertaken, especially given the limited information available on the ship's appearance from just a century ago. This book will help us today to gain a deeper understanding of the spirit of Santa Eulalia. The ship is unique to modelers, because here you can see and touch the construction elements typical for the models you assemble. At least for me, it really helps to understand the scale and texture of elements. This way, I can avoid some mistakes and make my models look more like real ships. So, let us start from the stern. The most attractive element for the modeler here is of course the steering machine. To understand the scale, the diameter of the steering wheel here is about 1 meter. For the Santa Eulalia Museum reconstruction, the so-called barrel system with a single steering wheel was chosen. According to the book, this system was the most common aboard paleboats and motorized sailing ships. And we believe that this system was the one originally used on the Carmen Flores, which we aim to restore. Here is how a typical barrel system is constructed. And this is what it looks like on Santa Eulalia today. A wooden structure that protects the mechanism is known as a piano, and it's a component that's clearly visible on every ship model. After just a brief glance at the binnacle, we move on to the superstructures on the deck. And the first one is the captain's cabin. In fact, the cabin itself is below the deck. This house above it serves to provide additional headroom to the cabin. The house is just over one meter tall. On the roof of this structure, you may notice a skylight with suitably protected glass windows. And here is what the cabin looks like from the inside. The book suggests that on the Carmen Flores, the compass was most likely mounted under the roof of the captain's cabin, on the ceiling, and it was mounted upside down. The idea behind was that the captain could control the ship's direction at all times. Now, let's take a look at hatchways. Another detail that lends a realistic appearance to the deck of every ship model. The Santa Eulalia features two hatchways, a larger one forward of the main mast and a smaller one to the stern of the same mast. They are covered with thick planks known as hatch covers. At the end of each hatch cover is a handle designed to allow for lifting and removal. 
And take a look at these barrels. They are tied down to the bulwark and serve as additional storage space. Just imagine them crafted on the deck of your model. On the bow, just behind the bow hood, there is a device that warrants the attention of every modeler. If replicated accurately, it truly enhances the realistic appearance of any ship model. This device is the windlass. That is an essential tool for handling heavy tasks, such as dealing with anchors or even towing the entire ship. Windlasses of various designs have been used throughout history and are still in use today. When replicating one, it's important to reflect the specific era during which the real ship sailed. This was certainly the case with Santa Eulalia. Although it's a replica of an old ship, it had to meet today's safety standards for sailing. The reconstruction engineers faced the ambitious task of integrating a modern, powerful hydraulic machine made of metal inside an antique-looking wooden housing. And here is the outcome. If you didn't know the story, would you be able to spot the difference? Since we have discussed the windlass, let's shortly look at anchors and their stowage. The book notes that the original Paleboat had two Admiralty-type anchors. This detail interested me, because such anchors seem a bit antiquated for a ship built in the 1920s. Nevertheless, as the book mentions, Santa Eulalia was outfitted with two anchors weighing 150 and 300 kilograms. Additionally, there is a third anchor, referred to as the Anchor of Hope, but this one is stored in the hold and is thus less interesting for our discussion. The anchorage setup is rather traditional and uncomplicated. You can observe how the anchors are stowed on the catheads. Now, let's examine some details of the masts. On this type of ship, there are three masts and all of them have similar rigging. They are equipped with gaffs and booms to support sails, known as spankers and gaff topsails. It's interesting that the connection of gaffs and booms to the mast still employs the old method using so-called jaws, perils and trucks. It functions like a bearing, allowing the gaff to rotate and move up and down along the mast. This method of joining has been seen on most ships from medieval times until the end of the 19th century. Since the early 20th century, the gooseneck, which is on your screen now, has become more common. It is also interesting that jaws are attached to the gaff, not with traditional iron bands, but with the kind of nails. And here is the wedge, the place where the mast goes through the deck. Unfortunately, the deck is painted, probably for protection. I believe that originally the wooden structure was clearly visible. Now, let's move on to some rigging components. In the ship's hold, I discovered two kinds of blocks. This one contains a single sheaf. And this fragment shows how empty shell of two sheaf block looks like. Notice that the block shells are constructed from several layers of wood held together with bolts. Additionally, unlike contemporary metallic blocks, the wooden shell of this block is just that, a shell. It doesn't bear any load. The heavy duty work is performed by another structural element made of iron. Here it is. And this is what the block looks like when it's fully rigged. To my surprise, I also found sails in the same hold. And this is what they look like up close. Take note of the thinness. Now, try to imagine what kind of fabric you would use for a model of this ship at, say, a 172 scale. Perhaps it has to be the absolutely finest batiste or even some type of thin paper to get the scale and texture just right. 
let's continue along the booms and observe how all these components work together. Now, just a few notes about the running and standing rigging. On Santa Eulalia and many ships of her time, shrouds and some other standing riggings are made of steel. This means that the black color is entirely appropriate for them. Meanwhile, red lines are white, being made of rope. This gives us a good indication of what kind and color of thread to use when modeling this aspect of the rigging. And before we conclude, I invite you to stroll along the deck with me and take in some other details of interest for ship modeling. Well, that concludes our tour for today. I'd like to thank you for joining me. If you enjoy this kind of content, please let me know in the comments, as I have more old sailing ship replicas in mind that I'd love to share with you. Also, I invite you to share your experiences in the comments if you've had the chance to visit the Maritime Museum of Barcelona or any other maritime museums. I'm eager to hear what impressed you the most. Have a wonderful day, stay in touch and goodbye.